And welcome. You're listening to The Matt Burton Show. I'm your host, Matt Burton, and today I have the pleasure of having on the telephone with us Second Amendment and political analyst Cody Wilson. Cody is the author of Come and Get It, The Guns Printer Guide to Thinking Free. Cody, welcome. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about you are the founder and director of Defense Distributed and home of the Wiki Weapon Project, a nonprofit organization that developed, and I had to read this two and three times to believe it, but you have developed a gun suitable for 3D printing. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure, sure. We've got a research and development firm that we've had for a few years now. We've done a lot of private development on uh, digital production of guns, like using 3D printers and using milling machines, basically taking blueprints and, and computer drawings uh, for gun parts and then, in, in fact, entire guns, making them out of different materials and uh, basically with machines that you can really have access to more and more every day uh, that can connect to your computers, really taking the Second Amendment and kind of giving it to the people in a direct way that doesn't rely on traditional manufacturers. Uh, or the well, you know, you know, you know, because it's funny that you said that about the government. I could only imagine how the government, as of right now, is is kind of thinking about this. I mean, you know, because I mean, are you facing any battles with the Justice Department? Well, I mean, yeah, it's funny you say that. We uh, our time under the Obama administration was both like very productive, but also very difficult. Uh, ever since 2013, the Obama State Department has tried to kind of resist our advocacy, our our attempts to put. Uh, the, uh, the products of our research onto the internet and to share it freely with American citizens. They take the argument that you, know, you have to get the government's permission before you share this kind of information online. It's related to national security. And you know, we take the position that, well, obviously this is these are matters related to the Second Amendment, but they're also protected by the First Amendment. Right. If we develop things privately for the public, we should be able to share them with the public. So we've been in court many years now <laughs> trying to get a kind of uh, more stable judicial recognition of our freedom to do this kind of activity. Well, now, your book, tell us a little bit about that. I mean, how do you develop a 3D gun? I mean, how is that? <laughs> I would say uh, it was both, like, inevitable <laughs> and, like, impossible, uh, because no one really in the last 20 years of additive manufacturing or this, this group of technologies that we call 3D printing, nobody there at research institutions and major corporations was really looking to do full gun work. Maybe they were doing supporting work for the industry, prototyping for different American arms companies or something. But basically what had happened was we, we recognized a few years ago that the technology and the materials were getting to the point where not only could you make prototypes of these devices, but you could make functional devices, devices that as soon as you created them on the 3D printer were good enough to work on their own as, as real devices. They were no longer really just models or prototypes. Right, so if this gun works exactly like a Smith & Wesson or a, or a Glock, I mean, it works exactly the same. Then. Well, I would say, like, the, the functions are the same, but the materials are very different. Okay. So, I mean, you know, a Smith & Wesson or a, an LCR or something, I mean, these frames of, uh, are, are normally gunmetal, you know, steel or aluminum. And we're, we're talking about composite materials that behave like ceramics, sometimes behave like soft metals like aluminum. So you have to kind of be... You have, to, you have to kind of solve the problems of, of a gun in, in a different way, use, use different math. But we basically knew that there were different kinds of guns we could create uh, simply by looking at the map on paper and knowing, oh, sure, certain kinds of gun barrels could totally withstand uh, these pressures from commercial ammunition. So it was a matter of just a proof of concept, really, and then kind of demonstrating that in the future and for all times to come, there's going to be a whole new breed of guns made, a strange new set of digital techniques. When you say going back to the Obama administration, how have they been supportive of this versus obviously the fight? Because right now we all know that during the Obama administration he has tried. Well, actually, let me scratch that. Under the Obama administration, there's been more killings. Obviously, in his hometown, just over the Christmas holiday, 61 people were shot. As of right now, 11 of them have died. So how is this? Right. I mean, how has he did anything for gun control? And the second of all is how is he going? You know, because how has he really supported your efforts in this? Well, I would I will just out the gate say you know nothing nothing the Obama administration has done has been directly supportive uh, of our efforts unless you just want to say that the fact that they haven't like totally crushed us is like supporting us. It's been very difficult to survive in the Obama years, but at the same time, that created, I guess you could say, created a demand uh, for our, our products and our and our efforts. So we have a machine that we sell that's very popular, 
uh, because of Obama. And this machine is called the Ghost Gunner. It's a CNC machine. It, it finishes rifle receivers for the AR-15 and the AR-10. We sold many, many thousands of them over the last couple of years because every time Obama gets it in his head that he's going to announce some type of gun control, uh, people buy as many ARs and budget ARs and, and gun parts as they reasonably can. So you could say in a way, and you've probably heard it before, Obama is a very good gun salesman, <laughs> even if he doesn't intend to be. Right. Well, now, uh, let me ask you this. Chicago, though, you asked yeah. me about Chicago. I mean, yeah. I guess I have an opinion there if you want to hear it. Oh, yeah, go right ahead. Gosh, I'm, I'm sure it's been said on our, on our team many times, but it's amazing to me that a city that's you know three times smaller than New York has 20% more murders and shootings. And that's on a good year, 20%. I mean, right now, it's, it's beating all the records. So, I, you know, you can, you can positively point to, to a city like Chicago over and over uh, to demonstrate that simply re- like restrictive access to, and like prohibitions uh, of guns are not, are not going to work. Of course, the Bloomberg types are always going to say, well, we should just ban guns in a 100-mile radius outside of Chicago and they'll get better. Of course, we all recognize that that's insane. That's like trying to ban... You know, you're trying to restrict, like, nicotine or something and trying to ban every cigarette in the world. I mean, you just, you, you recognize at a certain point that you have to let it go. But these gun controllers have never been bothered by uh, facts of reality, have they? No, that's right. Well, uh, you know what, it's also a, you know, also, I know it's like with anything else, obviously, is if you tell somebody, you know, don't do something, what are they going to do? They're going to end up doing it. And, you know, you know, that's just my theory on it. Obviously, you know, with if we wouldn't, you know, we definitely have to have gun control, but there's a process of doing it, you know. And, you know, I'm like yourself, come and take it, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, I mean, come and, you know, come and take it. Now, with the new Trump administration, never in my life would I had thought that that would actually come out of my mouth, but the Trump administration, <laughs> do you think that they will be supportive of your efforts, or have you thought any of that yet? Well, you know what? I'm, I'm optimistic. I mean, I guess I'm optimistic in the way that anyone would be now, because he simply isn't on the record on a lot of things yet. But the way he campaigned, and I'll, look, I'll have to admit, you know, I didn't, I didn't vote for Trump. I, I certainly didn't vote for Hillary. Um, I, you know, I was, I was kind of withheld my, uh, my opinions. And I, I think Trump is working with the Heritage uh, Institute, for example, and, he, and he's really looking like he's going to appoint pro-Second Amendment justices to the Supreme Court. I think that his Department of Justice won't take it as a priority to come after groups like mine or to come after our gun culture on the Internet. I think it's very unlikely Jeff Sessions and the rest of them will, will try to hurt gun culture. So I'm actually feeling pretty good, man. I mean, it could be a whole lot worse, you know. Sure, sure. Well, like I said, um, you know, I'm definitely interested. My girlfriend's father is a big gun man, and he cannot wait to hear this interview because, you know, he's definitely intrigued now about a 3D gun, and I am myself. So, um, so Cody, just tell the listeners how they can get a hold of you and find out more about your projects. Well, sure. Okay. Our, our public projects right now can be found at ghostgunner.net. We sell 80% receivers for ARs, AR-10, ar 15 we sell machinery to help you complete those rifles for yourself, the military specification. And then uh, a lot of our research can be, uh, you can Google us. You can find us on YouTube. There's a lot of stuff out there. Awesome. Well, Cody, we appreciate you so much, and, and congratulations on being the founder of this 3D gun. I'm sure that you'll help a lot of people, you know, through the years. And like I said, and definitely well done, and kudos to you for, you know, creating something along the lines of you have. So, Cody, we appreciate you so much. Thank you, sir. We're just trying to support the Second Amendment in the way that we can. This episode of the Matt Burton Show is sponsored by No Block Jewelers, a break from the ordinary. Visit them at 107 East Main Street, Lincoln, North Carolina, 704-732-0731. 704-732-0731. Tell them Matt Burden sent you.